When you look at the Western Cape and compare the Western Cape to every other province in South Africa, there's only one key difference, and that color is blue. That color is blue. If it wasn't for blue government in the Western Cape almost for 20 years since 2006, we wouldn't be able to see the difference between any of the provinces. But we don't have to look overseas, for examples, or anywhere else. Right in our country here, we can see the difference that blue government makes. We don't have to talk about it. We can see it and we can feel it. But our message to the voters of Gauteng and the whole of South Africa in this election is, if you want blue government, you have to vote for it. It doesn't just come if you want blue government, you have to vote for it. And it's quite unfair for voters, let's say in Johannesburg, to give us 26% of the vote and then demand blue government. We can't do that, and the fault is not ours. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, did I play my part as a voter to bring the government I want? And that is the message, because voters have the primary responsibility. And then, of course, we have to do the necessary, and when we're in government, we do, and we do our very, very best. So now, as we look at our great Gauteng cities, and I grew up in this one, and went to school in this one, and we see them crumbling, it is literally heartbreaking. And every day, my heart and all the strength that I can send via Telstar goes to Celia Brink, who has the hardest job in the whole of South Africa. And as I said, we are in spitting distance of the Yellow Party. And in this election, it may be blue versus yellow. That's what it is in this election. But let me tell you something. It won't be long. It won't be long before the choice is between blue and red. Blue and red will be the future choice of South Africa. I've lived long enough to see the death of two huge parties that once were all powerful in South Africa. One was the United Party. Now, many of you may never have heard of the United Party. It was once a very powerful government under Prime Minister Jan Smuts. Do you remember him from history? Well, I was alive then. Can you believe it? <laughs> Can you believe it? Andy Koki, I was here. And that almighty party that had the respect of the whole world because they didn't organize properly internally and because they did not know where their roots were and because they could not default to principles, they unraveled and died while I was a journalist on the Rand Daily Mail writing about it. And then the National Party, it was almost like a one-party state, single-party domination. The DA's forerunner, the Progressive Party, had one public representative in the whole of South Africa. And I often wish Helen Sussman could just look down and see us now. I wish she could just look down and see us now. 